What really happened to Lou Christie? Christie was born Luigi Alfredo Giovanni Sacco on February 19, 1943, in Glenwillard, Pennsylvania, and grew up in suburban Pittsburgh. While attending Moon Area High School, he studied music and voice, served as student conductor of the choir, and sang solos at holiday concerts. His teacher Frank Cummings wanted him to pursue a career in classical music, but Sacco wanted to cut a record to get on American Bandstand. At age 15 he met and befriended Twyla Herbert, a classically trained musician 20 years his senior, who became his regular songwriting partner and wrote hundreds of songs with him over the next 30 years until her death in 2009. Sacco performed with several vocal groups and between 1959 and 1962 released several records on small Pittsburgh labels, achieving a local hit with The Jury by Lou G and The Lions released on the Robbie label. After graduating from high school in 1961, Sacco traveled to New York City and worked as a session vocalist. In 1962, Sacco approached Nick Chenchi with some demo tapes. One of the first things Chenchi did was change the name Luigi Alfredo Giovanni Sacco to Lou Christie. Chenchi told Sacco that there was only one great Italian singer and that he had to change his name. Sacco's father liked the name change because it had Christ in it. Chenchi liked Sacco's falsetto voice and suggested that he listen to the Four Seasons' recent hit Sherry. Sacco and Herbert used the song as a model to write an original song called The Gypsy Cried. Chenchi produced a recording of Sacco performing the song at Gateway Studio in Pittsburgh and initially released it on his own C&C label as a single in 1962, credited to Lou Christie, the name Sacco used thereafter. The name Lou Christie was chosen by C&C Records, and The Gypsy Cried was credited to Lou Christie before they had consulted with Sacco about the name. The Gypsy Cried became a regional hit, selling 30,000 copies in Pittsburgh. Chenchi contacted Morris Levy of Roulette Records, saying that he had a hit that needed national distribution. Levy released the single on Roulette, but initially, nothing happened. Airplay slowly spread across the country, and The Gypsy Cried reached number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, selling over 1 million copies. Chenchi produced additional recording sessions for Christie in 1963 that generated two more hits. Two Faces Have I, his second million seller, reached number 6 on the chart in June 1963. Roulette released an album of 12 Lou Christie, Twyla Herbert songs in 1963 that reached 124 on the Billboard 200. With those hits, Christie joined Dick Clark's Caravan of Stars tour. Christie's third Roulette release, How Many Teardrops, stalled at number 46 as Christie's career was temporarily derailed by his induction into the U.S. Army. Christie did not have another charting single for two and a half years. Christie's career was quickly re-established after his discharge from the military when he signed with the MGM label. MGM reportedly disliked Christie's first single for the label, the Christie Herbert song Lightning Strikes. But Christie's new management promoted the record in California, and when it gained some traction, MGM released it. Lightning Strikes reached top one in the U.S. on Christie's 23rd birthday on February 19, 1966, entered the U.K. Top 20, becoming his first hit in that country, and peaked at top one in Canada. The song featured his signature falsetto and included a female chorus shouting stop, in counterpoint to the lead vocal. After being dropped by MGM and an unfruitful stint with Columbia Records in the late 1960s, Christie teamed up with Buddha Records and Bubblegum Music record producer Tony Romeo and had a surprising wall of sound constant uptempo hit I Am Gonna Make You Mine in the early autumn of 1969. Helped by backing vocalist Linda Scott and by two promotional videos distinctly different from each other, the song peaked at number 10 in the US, but climbed to number 2 on the UK singles chart and thus became his biggest hit there. 
A follow-up, She Sold Me Magic, charted only in the UK, peaking at number 25, and was later covered by Elton John. Conversely, Are You Getting Any Sunshine? only charted in America, where it reached number 73. Christie spent the early 1970s between London and New York City. In 1971 he released a concept album called Paint America Love, regarded by some as his best LP, and married former UK beauty queen Francesca Winfield in London. In 1974, Christie tried a new musical style, going country on his album Lou Christie. This album is also known unofficially as Beyond the Blue Horizon after its best-known track, a cover of a hit song from 1930 written for the film Monte Carlo. It featured one of Christie's strongest non-falsetto vocal performances, Citation Needed. The song missed the country charts and only made number 80 on the pop chart but managed number 12 on the adult contemporary chart. The song has been used in several film soundtracks, including 1988's Rain Man. In the spring of 1978, Christie returned home to Pittsburgh to head the upstart record label 2001 Records, a branch of the 2001 and VIP nightclubs nationwide. While visiting local friends at the Staircase Lounge, Christie heard a local group, Sweet Breeze, and loved the band's harmonies and music. Christie signed the band Sweet Breeze to their first recording contract and the band recorded a song written by Christie and Herbert called Summer in Malibu which was a regional hit for the band. Christie became active on the oldies circuit starting in the early 1980s, scoring a final U.S. chart hit, credited as Summer 81 medley by the Cantina Band, in 1981, performing a medley of Beach Boys classics. In 1986, he recorded a duet with Leslie Gore of a medley of Since I Don't Have You, It's Only Make Believe for Manhattan Records, a division of Emmy America. The two singers were touring together at the time, and the song was released only as a one-off single. Christie was credited as a special music collaborator on the movie Barcelona released in 1994. In 1997, Christie recorded his first all-new album since the 1970s, entitled Pledging My Love, and produced by Alan Grossman and Jim Mosier of Hit Music Studio in Spencer, North Carolina. Billboard labeled this new album most impressive comeback album. Most of it was penned by Christie, presented in a contemporary manner, and included the songs What Happened to the Nights, Techno Pop, and I Sure Fell in Love and covers of the Critters Mr. Dyingly Sad and Johnny Ace's title tune. Cub Coda said it was loaded with AOR hits. In 2004, Christie released his first concert album, Greatest Hits Live from the Bottom Line, which featured studio recording Christmas in New York as a bonus track. In addition to the occasional new release, Christie remains a concert act on the oldies circuit in the US and UK. He has also hosted a series of programs on Sirius XM radio for the 1960s channel. In 2015, Christie released his first new recording in several years, entitled Drive in Dreams, written by Gregory Sharp, who is a former member of Sweet Breeze, the Pittsburgh-based band that Christie signed to their first recording contract. His next release was 2016's When You Were Young, also penned by Scharf. Those are the things that really happened to him. Life has so many challenges that our job is to face everything. It makes us discover ourselves. 